be demanded as human beings. And that if he did that, they were going to come after him just like they were coming after us. And he said that he understood the cost. And most people wouldn't understand why he would take a chance on losing his career. But he said he cared more about the community because he was going to have a family. And he wanted his children to experience some of the things in life that he was not able to experience. And I understood that. That's why I called my name him Minister of Defense, because I knew he was going to defend the black community with everything he had. So that was my. That was your. Just process of him coming into the movement with you. And how, did, and how did it work out? How did he sort of navigate that line between being a Stax recording artist, an established artist, and then being in this group that was being surveilled by J. Edgar Hoover's FBI and COINTELPRO and all this stuff? How, how was he able to navigate that? How did that affect not only him, but the invaders? Well, I don't think... Um, John really worried about the FBI. <laughs> uh, I think when he made up his mind that he was going to do something, he did it. He put himself totally in it and, you know, let the feathers, feathers fly where they may. <laughs> and for me, his brother and I, Victor, who's here, we were contemporaries. And, uh, you know, we were the older guys. And John always wanted to be with the older guys. And so, when the pressure came down and the demand uh, from stacks that he made a choice. It was his career or the community. And everybody knows now what that choice was. He chose the community. And probably still today, there are people who think that he made a bad choice. And for someone who did, as he made that choice, you lose. You lose some of the advantages of life. You lose uh, the recognition that the newspaper would give. But you also draw pride from knowing that you did everything you could as a man. But you stood in other ways. They didn't even have careers to lose, but they were afraid to take a stand. And I always was proud of him more so than myself, because I didn't really give up anything. I just made a choice and followed through on that choice. But John had a whole different set of dynamics working with him. He was on the charts. His career was before him. And 
I really felt um, responsible to some degree, but he would always tell me, man, you didn't have anything to do with it. It was my choice. I did it for me. So. I love that you had a beautiful friendship, and it was an honor to witness that, to see you all together. Um, and I also love that John Gary continued to record right up until he couldn't record and sing anymore. Um, some of the last times that I saw him, he was playing me music in his car that he had recorded recently. So the music never went away. Um, the artistic drive, um, the creativity never went away, but neither did the dedication to his family and his community. And I think that's what's amazing. I have a, a last day John Gary Williams story myself. Uh, 